Okay, to start with, I'm going to review domain. So domain is what numbers would work for this function. Give that one a shot. Okay, your first thought should have been, can't let x be 5, because if it's 5, then the denominator would crash. So here's where 5 is. I just picked the middle, kind of. I can put numbers on either side now. And then it can't be 5. Empty spot. Okay? For the top, you should say x squared plus 2x plus 1 should be greater than or equal to 0. Factor it. x plus 1, x plus 1. X equals negative 1 is the important spot. Here's negative 1 over here. And then empty spot there. Or wait, could it work? Well, if you didn't know, you can look at the sign. You use the right sign. It says that it works. But if you also didn't know that this works, you could stick a negative 1 in and just see what happens. And you end up with a 0 on the top. And 0 on top is OK. It's just if there would be a zero on the bottom. The bottom doesn't have a zero, so it's okay. So negative one works. Then you test all the regions around it. Okay, I'm going to save some time here. I'm just going to check six, which is a pretty obvious one. If I put in a big number like six, it's going to be a positive number like that. It's going to work. Denominator's not zero or anything, so six works. And then this works. And then you figure out that that works too. Test the in intervals. Test zero if you're not sure. Put a zero here, zero here, zero here. Doesn't cause any crashing to happen. So square root of one over negative five. As long as it's not a zero on the bottom or a negative under the square root, it's fine. So then the final answer is negative infinity up to five. And then union with five to infinity. Raise your hand if you have any questions about that one. Okay, raise your hand if you got it right. Okay. It's probably two-thirds of you. And frankly, if the other one-third they didn't get it right, if you don't know what you did wrong, you need to come in and get some help or something. Because now by now we've done like, oh, I don't know, 12 of those in class together? Yes. Yes, another way to write that, all reals except x cannot equal 5. The only thing is if they ask on the test for interval notation, make sure you know how to do this. All right, good. That's one kind. Next kind uh, is, since there's no graph in calculators, how are you going to know what this graph looks like? Well, you better know what some of the base parent ones look like, and then you move them and shift them and stretch them and all that kind of stuff. Maybe a quick sketch. You could just kind of a rough sketch of where this thing would be. The main point, of course, is like where its vertex is, the pointy end. And then which way it's going, if it's going up or down. And that's probably all you'd need because then if I asked you, like, increasing or decreasing, or if I asked you for its range and domain, if you just can get a sketch, you're fine. All right, hopefully you know that the absolute value one's the V-shape. Raise your hand if you knew it was a V-shape. Okay, good. Next thing is I need to move it two to the left, which is that plus two there, and then minus one means down one. How many of you knew that it needed to go there? Okay, good. And then what's that 3 do? Stretches it. Now, this can confuse people, but basically, hopefully you get that when you stretch it, it just, like I grab these right here with two imaginary hands. There's another hand. There's another hand. And I grab them and I pull them up. All right, I don't like my hands anymore. I'm going to take them out. But I'm going to move it back here, and I'm going to stretch grabbing here and here, pulling upwards, and I will now have a V that looks like that. All right, so I want to get all that out of there, set that black V. Oh, I just deleted the whole thing. Undo. There we go. Get rid of this. Running the wrong X. There we go. And then get rid of this. Oh, that's all stuck together. Fine. Just move out of there, and I'll make a new... There. If I now asked you that point right there, would you be able to tell me? Would you agree that it's got a name? The vertex and it's also the something something. Something minimum? What? Local minimum. Right. It's the lowest spot. Okay. So it's the local minimum and it's the vertex. And 
it's the spot where it changes from decreasing all the way up to here. So it was decreasing from negative infinity up until, well, what is that point? That point is 2 to the left, so it's negative 2 comma negative 1. It's negative 2 up until here. There. That is decreasing. Because if you follow it from over here, you'd be going down here. And then once it hits there, it starts increasing. And it'd be increasing between negative 2 and infinity. Any questions about that? There's increasing and decreasing on the test. There's also this basic graphs. Which ones do you have to know? Do you know what uh, that would look like? What shape, generally? Parabola. And it's been moved where? Three to the left and down one. All right. Uh, what if I put a two in there? Now it's been stretched twice as tall, right? What if I put a negative out there? Flip, which way? Up, down. Over the x-axis is correct. Up, down, flip. Okay. Uh, what if I gave you this one? Remember what that one looks like? This guy right there. And then it moves where? Right for upside. What if I ask you for the range of that now? The range is from how low does it go to how high does it go? Okay, so what's the lowest it goes? Well, this is over 7 and up. No, it's over 4. Didn't really move that terribly well. Let me count it out. 1, 2, 3. Let's say I go 4. Up 7 would be like way up there. Okay. So, i move my red equation now. So now this is at 4, 7. Uh, and now, which part matters? Well, it's how low does it go. That's controlled by the y. And so it would be from 7 to infinity. And it does touch 7. There we go. There's my range. All right, I want you to do one like this by yourself, because I think this is the scariest part for most kids is the fact there's no calculator. So let's do one more like that. Negative absolute value of x plus 4 minus 10. Sketch it for me and then tell me what's the range and what's the domain. Starts off as a V-shape, moves forward to the left, down 10, and then flips, up, down. Now it really it's kind of confusing to flip it this way, but it, it will work. So now this piece here has to go up there, and now it's going to be way up there, going down. Like that. Now you could have flipped it early if you wanted to, but... It was an up-down flip. I think I did just flip it up-down, didn't I? Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to what I think the final answer should be. All right. I'm going to do this in the official right order, just in case you guys don't know what the official right order is. You would start on the inside, and you do that first. And that would be to the left, four. Then, in the right order, on the outside here, the stuff on the outside, between those two, this one's a multiply by negative 1, which means it's a flip up, down. So I'm going to do that first. And I'm going to do this second. Once you're done with the inside stuff, go to the outside. On the outside stuff, do it in the right order. Okay, on the stuff the outside, I got the negative 1. That's going to be make it flip upside down. So now it's going to look like... Let's use a different color. Go with green. Like that. And then last, I have to move the thing where? Down 10. Down, right? Minus 10. I did have it wrong before. Thank you, those of you that were trying to fix it. But there it is. Raise your hand if you had the sketch in the right spot. Okay, good. Now, the order matters. If you don't do these in the right order, it can really mess you up. That's what I did wrong last time. 
All right, so if I were to ask you for the range of this and the domain of this, the range is how low does it go to how high does it go? So many people get this one wrong just because they put it in the wrong order. If you said from negative 7 to infinity, you did it wrong. What you should have said was from negative infinity, that's the lowest it goes, to what's the highest it goes, negative 10. All right, next one would be, and again, a lot of kids have this reversed, and some kids get it confused that, like, because it's going downwards, they say, uh, well, it's going to go to infinity, but it's negative infinity. All right, the range was that. How about the domain? The domain is left, right. How far does it go this way? And that way? Infinity. And again, so many people say negative infinity. Do you get why they'd say it goes to negative infinity? Because it does go down, but we're not asking that. It's how far does it go this way? That's negative infinity. And how far does it go that way? Positive infinity. And people see this heading downwards and they think negative infinity when they should be thinking left, right. And right is positive infinity. Down would be negative, but that's not where we're going. We're going this way. So from negative infinity to positive infinity. And aren't they always that way? Pretty much the V's and the U's are always negative infinity to positive infinity. So quadratics and absolute values. Things like that. Yes? Yep. That axis. It's an up-down flip. So everything that was above there goes down the same amount that it was above. If it was up 10 before, now it has to be down 10. You know what I'm saying? Uh, nope, this is down 10. Minus 10 means down 10. So it's got to end down 10. I get what you're saying. You're, you're trying to do it in the opposite order. See, that's the problem. This has to go first. You have to flip it first. Okay, so it was flipped when it was back up here, and it got flipped, so it was just going like that. Then it's just a move down 10. Now, if you try to move it down 10 first and then flip it, that's what I did wrong before, and that's how I was getting in the wrong spot. What order do you do it in? The order of operations. Multiply by a negative 1 comes before subtract 10. So the multiply has to be first. That's why I had to flip first. Okay. A lot of stuff to know on this test. Here's the next thing. Odd even. So is this, let's make it cute, odd or not? You have to have something memorized. This would be, if you were going to make any flashcards for this, this would be one of the things you'd put on a flashcard. It would be the odd rule. How many of you could recite it? Confident you know it. All right, so it's less than half the room. All right. Why don't you give it a shot? Mm -hmm. There you go. You're exactly right. Perfect. Here's the odd rule. If you didn't know it before, write it down. Put a star by it. Memorize it. Because you'll have to use this and the uh, even rule, too. Okay, so the odd rule. I do both sides, and I make sure it actually is equal. So then I take this function right here and write it with an empty spot. Three empty spot cubed plus one, and I drop that in to the empty spot. Negative x. And then negative x gets cubed, and it's three times that. Well, the negative x times negative x times negative x makes negative x cubed. So it's negative three x cubed plus one. That means the opposite of the function. Here is the function. I can just prop it right back in there. 3x cubed plus 1. And then the mistake kids make is they will just put a negative on the front number. And then it looks like it's perfect. You see what I mean? It looks like, hey, they're equal. So it's odd. Where did I screw up there? You can't just put a negative on the first number. You've got to put a negative on both. Or you've got to distribute that negative here and there. So it's negative 3x cubed minus 1. And now you can see they're not equal, so it's not odd. Questions about that? How many feel like you could do that yourself? You're good on that part. Okay, good. The next one is a odd, or that was the odd, let's try even. Test and see for me is this, even. Hopefully you know the even rule. If you don't, I'll be writing it up there in a second test and see if that is even. Remember, you just saying the right answer, let's say the answer is yes, and if you just say yes, 
you aren't going to get credit. You have to show me the rule, and then you have to show me that both sides end up coming out equal. So without further ado, the rule always starts this way. Both rules start exactly that way. And both rules also have an f of x in them. But this one has another negative right there. And you can say, oh, it's got two negatives. That's odd. Oh, that's an odd test. I just said it was odd. Yes, that's not the right. This is the even uh, part. So I should not do it that way. Sorry. Oh, there. Now that's the even rule. Because it doesn't have a negative in front of it right there. Okay. All right, so is it even? Well, I'm going to test it quick. F of negative x. So I'm going to go three empty spot squared plus four. I'm going to drop in negative x, and then I'm going to square that. makes three x squared plus four. And over here, I just drop this down and say three x squared plus four. And I look at that and that and say they're equal to each other. So therefore, it's even. Raise your hand if you agree that that was even. Okay, good. All right, moving on. You remember that even ones have symmetry, right? So let's say I had that. And let's say I said the rest of the graph's over here. What should it look like if it's even? Sketch me what it would look like. If you know what even graphs look like, you'll be able to tell me. And I hope put something like that. So if it has the point of like, you know, four comma five on it, then there'd have be another point like that over here, right? It wouldn't be four comma five, but it would be what? Negative four comma five. And notice that this is like f of x. And this is like negative f. No, this is like f of negative x. Because see how the x is negative? This is like f of x. And this is like f of negative x, because the, the x part was negative or the opposite of what it was before. And there's the rule that we memorized for evens. OK. Same idea with odds. These are harder for people. Try to do odd symmetry with that. Sketch it for me. All right, so for every point with odd symmetry, it should be another point, just like it straight through there and down there. See what I mean? So that spot goes with that spot. And if I move out to the end, straight through there and down there. See what I mean? OK, it's point symmetry. It's reflection over a point. So if this spot here is uh, 7 comma 7, what's that spot there? Negative 7, negative 7. Okay. And this one's tricky. You can't really do the rule from this because this has a normal f of x in it. But then this one over here has a negative x and a negative y, which has both negatives that we see in the odd rule. You see odd rules like this. So that one's hard to show you with the rule in, but anyway. Okay. So next kind you have to know how to do is, and the last kind you have to know how to do, and it's horizontal and vertical asymptotes. What if I said something was a bob? You know what I'm talking about? Figure on the bottom, and what's the, what's the horizontal asymptote going to be? Zero. Now here's my biggest fear is that you'll get something stupid wrong, like horizontal versus vertical. I want you to just tell me for a second. Don't say it out loud because you'll spoil it, my little experiment. Which one should be x and which one should be y? Don't say it. Write it on your paper. Which one should be x equals something and which one should be y equals something? And if you're not sure, you're the one I'm afraid about. Because it's really, these problems aren't that hard, but then kids will often put the answers in the wrong blank, and then they just get it all wrong. So that's why I keep pounding on this over and over again. I gave you this neat old little ways by looking at the first letter for you to know which one was which. So how many of you knew that this one was Y and this one was X? Raise your hand if you did. Okay, good. All right. 
you didn't know that, make sure you get it straight. This H, remember how I was saying? You could take this H right here and go, whoop, now it looks like a Y, see? All right, and then this vertical, I gave you this idea where you could say the V is made up. I can't do it with the same color. I'll do one black, one red. It's like that V. Slide this over. It's like an X equals thing. Okay, so then Bob is Y equals zero is your horizontal asymptotes. How about Sob? Same on both, so what does that mean? Ratio. It's a ratio of the lead coefficients. Y equals a ratio. And then the last one is bot. What's the deal? No bots. So there's none. When it comes to the asymptotes, there are none. Okay, so here's a few. That's a nasty one. So, figure on top. Bigger and bottom, same on both. I'm hearing some bigger on top, and I'm hearing some same on both. Give me an opinion. Same on both. Raise your hand. You're right. Because if you multiply it out, this times this will give you x cubed, and all of a sudden it's same on both. All right. So if it's same on both, then what's the, what is it? It's a ratio of the lead coefficients. What's the lead coefficient here? How about here? So it'd be y equals 1 over 1, which is y equals 1. Is it always 1? No. Sometimes these numbers are weird. I'll give you a weird one. Oh, wait. Question on this one? You would. But the point is that when you multiply this times this, you'll get an x cubed, and that makes this the same as that. Degree. We're talking degree. So you're right that it would also go here, and that would be, final answer would be x cubed plus x squared. But it's only the biggest one that matters when you're picking degree. So just because this has a 3 and a 1 in it, it's kind of irrelevant. It's the bigger one that matters. No, you don't. Thank you for asking. So what's the degree of this one? Uh, so what you were thinking is this would be bigger on bottom. And it wouldn't be. Because the degree is only the bigger one of the two. Okay? So this one's same on both. Okay, what you might be thinking of is if you multiply them, then you can say you kind of add them together because this degree and this degree be put together and make two. But when you're adding things just like this, the degree of the top there would be degree three. Okay, all right. So let's say it was that way, and then here's I'll I'll make one of those trickier ones. Uh, All right. Do you see that it's same on both? Okay, and if it's same on both, what is the ratio going to be? Y equals what on the top? That's easy. One, because you take the one that's got the cube on it, it's the number on that, the lead coefficient. And on the bottom one, negative five. That's the bigger, that's the one that tells the degree, so that's the coefficient I have to use. And then negative counts, so 1 over negative 5. You get that one? All right. Okay. So we've covered uh, horizontal asymptotes. Let's do vertical ones. Let's say I had this x squared plus 3x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 1. All right. What could crash this thing? Anybody do it in your head? Zero would not crash it. If I put in a zero here and here, I wouldn't have a zero on the bottom. So x equals zero does not crash it. Yes, I would agree. You're factoring this would be smart. We set the bottom part equal to zero. x squared plus 2x plus 1 has to equal zero. Factor it. x plus 1, x plus 1. So what crashes it? Negative 1. x equals negative 1. And if I actually try it, stick in a negative 1 here. And here, you'd find that you end up with zero, because this would be one, this would be one, and this would be negative two. They all cancel out, makes it zero on the bottom, bad news. So x cannot be negative one, it would be my domain. But that's also the thing that makes the asymptotes. So if I asked you for asymptotes on this, you'd say, 
the x equals ones are whatever crashes the denominator. That's the asymptote line. The same thing that would have crashed it is the thing that makes the asymptote. And then y equals, oops, see, not x, y equals things. Ask Bob why. Is it bigger on bottom, bigger on top, same on both? What is it? Same on both, so it's a ratio. So what would it be? I'm going to get rid of this messiness here. It's a ratio of the lead coefficients, which is a 1 here and a 1 here. So it's y equals 1 over 1, which is y equals 1. So now one more. I just give it to you, and you answer it. Try this one. Y equals x squared over x squared minus 3x minus 4. Tell me the x equals things. Tell me the y equals things. What, what are the horizontals? What are the verticals? There can be two asymptotes, by the way. There can be two horizontals or two verticals. For the y kind, ask Bob why. Is it Bob? No. What is it? Same on both, so it's y equals 1 over 1, which is y equals 1. Raise your hand if you had that part right. Good. The other part is what would crash the bottom. This tells me, this part here tells me that answer. So I would factor it. We really tend to make problems that factor. So I'm guessing this one, when I go like this, I'm going to double check it now. Outside, inside would make negative 3x, yay. First or x squared, and the, the last would be negative 4. That worked. So I have two things. I have x equals 4 and x equals negative 1. There's two things. So what are those two things? But what are they? They're asymptotes. x equals 4, x equals negative 1. Two of those x kind, which, by the way, which are the x kind? Are the x kind vertical or horizontal? Vertical. And those are horizontal. All right. How many of you feel like you're ready for this test? Good. All right. I think you're going to be okay on this one. I think it's easier than the last one that you had. But um, we have another tough one coming after that. But this one shouldn't be that bad. So I'm going to give you both worksheets today, both the one I would give you today and the one I'm giving you tomorrow. But some of you will be here tomorrow. Yeah, you got time to work on it. Some of you won't be here tomorrow. Now you've got it so you can get it done.